This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 199, The Predator from 2018. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate, how long has it been since you've seen The Predator? You said it came out in 2018? Yeah. 2018. That's the last time I saw it. (laughs) I only watched it once. I saw this at the theater. I saw this at the theater. And then back when I collected Steelbooks, I bought the 4K Steelbook of it. Never watched it again. Then I bought that four-pack 4K, and I sold the Steelbook, and then I watched it for this review. And that was it. So this is a second-time watch. Yeah, uh, oh man, for me, can it be? I think it's two or three. I saw it in the theater. Okay. Me and my wife, she fell asleep. I was horrified from what I saw. <laughs> and then I brought the four pack. I watched the four pack. And then the third time would be this time okay. for this review. So You've seen it that's one the last more time. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one and last time. You're more I of an expert it. than me. One oh, pretty time. much. All right. So with that said, let's see what the critics and the audience have to say about The Predator for 2018. Nate. Well, it's going to be an easy one because they have the same exact score. There's no mm-hmm. difference. Critics and audience, the rare. If you've been listening to all these episodes, this is pretty rare. But even scores, 33% right across the board. Critics, 33. Audience, 33. That means one out of every three persons like this movie mm. it's not it, it sounds like it's not that bad but it is bad when you think of like <laughs> a thousand people you know yeah. then it's not that many it's only like 330 so it's not that many but yeah 33 and 33 so equal right across the board i'm shocked i thought it would be like 14 oh you thought it would be lower <laughs> I thought it was going to be super lower, but 33, 33, look, you know, I'm not surprised. Fans, fans of franchises tend to be forgiving with mm. their franchises. It's just, it's a fact of life. Hey, it is what it is, but you know what? It's time to get into this. I want to hear what Nate thinks about this film because yeah. uh, this is the second time for him watching it. So I really want to know. All right, Nate, let's get right into this movie review. Uh, first to- uh, first segment up, we got the main lead character here. Okay. Um, so what, what do you think? That one guy. Yeah. So you guys, you know, I just said what I said about fans, but if you've been listening to the last three weeks, I have already admitted that I am not a diehard predator. <laughs> like I like the first movie a lot and like, that's it. I'm not. I don't like Alien vs. Predator. I'm not a diehard Predator fan. So I'm going to bring you real honest. I mean, not that Alex won't. He will, too. He's very honest. But I'm coming from a non, like, fan perspective of the Predator. This lead character is not that good. I gave him a two. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I gave him a two. Well, the only reason I gave him a two is because he's pretty good, like, Okay, he's a military guy. He's good with the action and stuff like that. So I give him a two. He's not, but he's like a terrible dad, pretty much. You know, he's a, he's a terrible husband, like the lady says. She's like, he's a lot of things. He's a, he may be a terrible husband, but he's a good soldier. All right, so that's all he is. He's a good soldier. They pretty much tell you right there. That's his whole, his whole identity is good soldier. So Boyd Holbrook is the actor. He's an okay actor. Like he's been in things I like. He was, he was okay in Logan. He had like a metal arm or whatever. I don't know why, but yeah. he was cool in Logan. He's been in a few things that I like him. The performance is not like bad. He fits the role, but the character is not very interesting. He's got a son and a wife that he's kind of estranged from. Um, he gets involved with a predator crash lands. I mean, this is more storyline, but still predator crash lands. He gets involved and then he wants to kill it. Like he, he's just like obsessed with killing the predator pretty much the whole movie. That's his only tie to it. It's, it's not like Arnold's predator where predator attacks his group. He kind of like, he kills one of his friends or his two friends or whatever, but, but he's like hell bent on revenge. Like Arnold's like, I'm trying to survive. And this guy wants to like hunt the thing down and kill it. It's kind of weird. I'll be like, yo, get that thing away from me. I don't want to be nowhere near it. Y'all catch it. Yeah. And good luck. So I gave him a two. He's not very memorable. I don't even remember his name. And I just watched this today. He's soldier. So two. All right. So look with that. His, his name is Quinn McKenna. 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 Okay. Quinn McKenna. Quinn, He's whack. Yeah. Ma- Quinn McKenna. Very whack. I gave him a one. He is not interesting. His character wasn't written right. I, I felt like that was a rush character into the franchise, like the Predator. Like, we can say whatever we want about Danny Glover's character, but at least he had a purpose in part two. And True. I know you didn't like Danny Glover's character because he was just a cop. He was cop. Yeah, yeah he was cop. But he you know what? He had a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> 
But you're right. Yeah. He, this one is just a show, soldier. And you're absolutely right. Like, this dude wanted revenge. I understand. But first of all, it's an alien being that he saw turn invisible in front of him. And he wants to go right after this dude. I'm sorry. Any military guy, I don't care how badass you are. You will not want to go toe to toe with an alien being that has nope. invisible camouflage. So with, with that said, I didn't like the performance at all. I didn't care for the group. And I know you didn't tie in the group and everything. Oh, yeah. I, I'll I like just, <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, yeah. The group did not work for me, especially for a Predator movie. I was very shocked and surprised that they decided to make a comedy based group. Like Shane you had a guy Black. that had a, yeah, he had a, yeah. And I like the cast, like Thomas Jane, Keegan, Michael Key. I, I can't think of the black guy's name right now, but he's a good actor. He was in Moonlight. Like they got good actors. Theon Greyjoy. They're annoying. He had Tourette's. I'm like, what is, what is this? <sighs> yeah, I did not like the Tourette's dude. And I know he was the Punisher. We, we all know what he did. He's a cool He's actor. He's a great actor. Yeah. yeah, great actor. The Tourette's shit did not work with me. The the comedian dude, uh, whatever his name is. Keegan-Michael Key, yeah. Yeah, Key I was, is, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not. A movie like this, Predator did not need comedy relief. I keep telling people that. Does not need it. And they gave it to us. It did not work. His son, we'll talk about that during the storyline because that bothered me a lot watching the damn movie. Oh, yeah. Overall, so, yeah. you're absolutely right. Not memorable characters. Like, I could give two shits about this character. Olivia and I Munn. didn't. She's oh, a oh, scientist. Give me a break. Yeah, a hot scientist. But yeah, scientist. she's gorgeous. But yeah. I mean, just give me yeah. a break. Uh, Sterling K. Brown. I liked him. He, he, the black guy, the black scientist yeah. guy, because he seemed like he knew, like he was in on some joke that no one else was in on. He's like, I'm going to play this really kind of over the top. And all these people are like trying to be really. And he's just like, nah, this movie's goofy. And I'm just going to do this weird performance. I kind of like him. Yeah. I mean, look, with that said, I gave it a one. You gave it a two. Main villain. There's like 20 predators in this movie from what I remember. There's a big predator. So there's yes. So there's Predator. Yes. Then there's two Predator dogs, but they don't look like the one from the Robert Rodriguez movie. They look different. They got little dreadlocks like a regular Predator. So it was weird. Then they got the Shaquille O'Neal Predator, the Yao Ming. He comes out. He's (laughs) (laughs) the Yao Ming. He's like nine feet tall. And all right. So the Predators. (laughs) <laughs> okay i have been on record of saying i think two was the worst predator to me just yeah. as far as like he sucked he couldn't even he got beat up by daddy glover he's he was whack but in my mind i'm thinking maybe he's a baby you know i still gave him a three this predator he crash land oh, he's running away from another predator then he crash lands on earth kills some people uh, you know pretty good you know bloody kills got the technology whatever but pretty much gets like messed up by this by the good soldier guy Right. Because then he yeah. gets captured by some scientists like no predator ever has been captured. And they just captured this one and they're doing like a testing on him and all this. And I'm like, what the hell? And they don't really show him get captured like he's just captured all of a sudden. And yeah. it's like, how, when, who did this? How did they get this done? Like it's something to me that needed to be shown in a movie like this. When you have established yeah. a character that is an incredible hunter, survivor, killer, and you're going to tell me that they just got him somehow. They put him in a net and here he is. Okay. So this one is now the replacement of he's now the worst predator because he barely <laughs> kills anybody. Right. Yeah. Then when Yao Ming predator shows up, <laughs> he, bro, he, Yo, slams him dude. into the car. He punches him in the face so hard that he dies, and then he rips his head off. He's the worst predator. So I give that predator a one. He's no good. He looks cool, but he's no good. All right. Plus, he lets he lets people live. Like he lets Olivia Munn live for no reason. He just walks past her. Like he, he didn't have a good enough body count. He did kill some scientists in the lab. That was kind of cool, but whatever. One. Now Yao Ming predator. All CGI. He's fully CGI. He's not practical. He's not a man in a suit. He is a computer generated image. Is he cool? Yeah. I, I, okay. Predator. I've already said, it. I think he's a great like monster character. So he's not not cool, but it sucks that it's CGI in a movie that a series that has had all like guys in suits every single movie. Even the last one was like, besides the, the dogs were CGI, but like the predators were guys in suits and this one is full CGI. So he moves a little weird. Like he doesn't look natural when he's jumping and all this stuff. And then at the end, he gets beat up by good soldier scientist. Olivia Munn turns invisible. Like, you know what? I'm going to give them combined <laughs> a two. Also, I'm going to give them a two because they, I will say the there's some bloody kills like in the science lab or whatever. 
that are pretty cool. I do like when Yao Ming rips his head off, mm-hmm. like the other Predator. That was neat. So I give him the two just for that. But that's it. This, these are the worst set of Predators in any Predator movie, even including Alien vs. Predator, which we didn't review. Th- these are the worst ones, for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I agree with you, but I'm going even lower, baby. I give it a one. I did not like this Predator. All right, so the problem with this Predator, okay, I hated the fact that there was multiple Predators and they, knew they were going against each other. Because we never seen a movie that way. You know what right. I mean? Like, we've never seen a predator after a predator while a predator is going after humans. Right. Like, the story, we're going to talk about it in the storyline why that happened. But for me, it did not work. I think it was very, it was very too much storyline thrown all over the place. Because, I mean, I remember watching this in the theater going, why was there another predator hunting down a predator like, while he's attacking the humans? Like, it was just way too much going on. And you're right, the Yao Ming guy. Now, <laughs> he's a hybrid human mixed with pres- uh, predator blood. I thought that was once once Olivia Munn started to break down that DNA structure and this said, she said, I said, this is got to be one of the dumbass plot lines known to well, me. DNA was mixed with Yao Ming, clearly. Yeah, well, Yao Ming. Nine yeah. feet tall. Yeah. They must have killed him in the movie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He doesn't exist in this world. He He's doesn't exist. Killed. They took his yeah. blood and made a, a Yao Ming predator. Yeah, I don't like it. I felt like he was super strong. If you would have gave me him, as the actual villain, I would, this would have been super high because I was like, this, it would have been unique. It would have yeah. been a, a, a ten foot predator against these dudes. I would yeah. be like, yeah, that's actually really cool, like a big predator, uh, like invisible and all that. But it didn't work. It didn't do that. You had that original one, which I was like, eh, it, I don't know. I, I just felt like, and he lost his gadgets. Like what oh, yeah, predator all loses them. his gadgets in the beginning he of the let, movie? He let the soldier mail all his gadgets to his house. <laughs> <laughs> like he shipped it in a box. They're like, what? What is this? I that was what I was gonna. I thought you were gonna bring it up because I remember watching. I was like, wait a minute. He lost his hand cannon, his mask. Yeah. And I was like, what predator movie did he ever lose it? Besides taking it off and whooping someone's asses. Right. That alone gave it the one because I was like, there's no way any predator. We'll, we'll go down that line and, and allow you to take his gadgets. And he said, Millie FedEx did in Mexico. <laughs> he did. He did. He was in Mexico. He, he sent yeah. himself a package and then yeah. the kid got it and the kid knows how oh. to. Well, that's the first story. We're going to talk about that. that. But yeah, look, a one, another two for you. I, I gave it a one. Okay. Yeah. Action sequences. What did you think of the action? Uh, this will be the highest score in my list because okay. I do I do watch every movie objectively and the action's not bad in this movie honestly it's bloody it's bloody which I love you know it's R rated it's pretty fun I like the uh I like the scene with the uh you know when the crash landing scene's okay the very beginning but I like the scene in the facility when the predator like wakes up and starts like killing all the scientists it's pretty cool really bloody gory I like it you got Jake Busey in there, Gary Busey's son, of course, from Predator 2. He's, a, he's yeah. one of the scientists in there. So that was neat. He pl- um, uh, he plays Jake Keys. He plays the son of, of Part 2. Remember the oh, guy, okay. the scientist? Oh, yeah, he yeah, plays yeah. the father's so he's, son. So he got his actual son to, to play, play the father. son. Yeah. That's cool. I was, yeah, I'm with yeah. that. I like, I like Jake Busey, too. He's, he's kind of funny. He's funny. Um, <laughs> he's mad funny. Yeah, so, yeah. Then, uh, so that was neat. That scene was good. Then you got the scene a little bit later where the convict, the convict, uh, <laughs> The convict military guys, they all fight at the baseball field with the predator dogs. And uh, it was okay. Yeah. It was okay, though, because I do. There's a lot of gun, like gun shooting. I like the black guy. He does. He runs, jumps across the hood. Like it was okay. Not not amazing, but okay. Then there's the the fight. At, then the rest of them are at night, you know, like outside and at night, which I don't love because it's all dark. But whatever. They were fun. I think the last kind of action scene, it's well executed. It's bloody. So I'm going to give the action a four. I do think out of everything in this, it's probably, no, it's not probably. It's definitely the best part of the movie is it does have solid, coherent, well shot, bloody action. So it was a four. I didn't mind when, when the action goes off, that's the parts that I can watch the most because the rest of it is such a disaster. So uh, yeah, I give it a four. You know, I agree with everything you said. I didn't give it a four for great. I gave it a, you see, you use the word solid. And that's what I was thinking. It's a solid action. So I gave it a three for good. Because honestly, the action is not memorable. Like if if we, again, if we break down all three of the, I mean, all four of these movies, which we did, uh, which we did. And I go to you, Nate, which are the most memorable scenes of each of these movies? I guarantee you in a heartbeat, you'll give me one, two and Predators. This one, you will have trouble looking for that one scene that captivated yeah. you. And you go, oh, okay, this is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. for me, That's this fair. had no, no memorable moment for me to go. 
this is it. This is the scene that made Predators. I mean, the Predator, the Predator. Yeah. Didn't happen for me. I didn't like it as much. But I, I agree with you. Everything was cool and dandy. Sean, Shane Black does know how to shoot action because, of course, he did Iron Man 3. And, again, we reviewed another Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. That was another one that we did here on this show, in the channel. I liked it. I was like, you know what? The action is really good. You could see he knows how to shoot action. But, again, the action sequences here was poorly not executed, but it was poorly added to the movie. Like, it, it was just too much. Like, at the end, when they go to the ship to blow it up, to me, that was way too much chaotic because the guy went in there and then the, the other guy had the invisible cloaking device. Then yeah. he shot the other dudes and then the Predator came in. Everybody turned was invisible at everywhere. some point during this movie. Yeah. Like, all the humans got to turn invisible. is dumb. What made no sense to me, which... I'll just do it right now here. The invisible cloaking device was a round ball. In every other movie, the invisible device was on his hand because all he did was do the the little doo -doo 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 -doo, yeah. and then just showed up and then he disappeared. And I was like, wait a minute, son. Now he has a ball that he could just turn into invisible. <laughs> like to me, it was I I felt like and I know you use a lot of the the word when you do your reviews. It was not safe, but it was yeah. very um. Coincidence? Convenient. I guess it's a coincidence. Convenient. Very convenient. Going, oh, how can the humans take it away from it? Oh, we'll just make it into a little ball <laughs> we'll device. Just make it a ball. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it into a marble and yeah. it's easy for him to carry. Or, uh, well, first of all, he swallowed it and he shitted it out during the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Which I thought was got it was really bad. Uh, I'm, even my wife was like, first of all, it would have been really hard for him to just drink a brandy and swallow a a big thing without choking. But he did right. it like nothing. Like he just, he he, he just guzzled it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big throat. <laughs> that's his nickname, Big Throat. Big Throat. <laughs> yeah, Big Throat yeah. McKenna. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, but look, I, I understand it. it. Look, it is what it is. Poor choices in a lot of the scene uh, decisions here. Even when they went on top of the machine. And the cloaking had to come, and then it cut the dude in half. I was just like, yeah. And then the dude willingly threw his ass into the engine. <laughs> yeah. Not the true. gun. Yeah. He didn't throw the gun into the engine. He decided to go, I do peace. Whoa. <laughs> he literally willingly threw himself into an engine. <laughs> And I was just like, yeah, that's too coincidence. <laughs> it is way too much. Like, I was just and like, the yeah. the Predator, like, he knows the thing has cloaking, too, and he's, like, touching the ship, and his arm gets chopped off. It comes <laughs> and then he gets mad at them, like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is so, that's kind of silly. It, yeah. It's just a lot of, a lot of silliness. So, anyway, I gave it a three. I think it was good. You gave it a four. Okay, yeah. storyline. A one. <laughs> a one. A one. And this is I don't remember I remember when I saw this like we walked out the theater and I was like that wasn't that bad you know what I mean like it was whatever now this was written at the time and you have more to say about it than I do but this movie was written at the time where these movies and shows kept doing this thing where they would have these like autistic characters or characters yeah. with Asperger's or whatever and they're all like super geniuses and like, and I get it. There are such things of like sometimes like a movie like Rain Man, which was in the 80s, right? Like they do have, some of them have like these memories that they could remember everything. But, but this kid, okay, Jacob Tremblay, who's a great actor. He's a great actor, yeah. the kid. Uh, man, nothing wrong with him. He's a kid. I'm not going to sit here and bash him, but he didn't write this movie. And <laughs> the way it's written, it's like, give yeah. me a, what is this? Like he opens this thing. And, and he just understands the predator language and he knows how to read it and write it and figure out how to use all this machinery. Um, and then when kids yell at him, he's sitting in the floor, rocking in the corner, making noises, you know, like hitting himself in the head. I'm like, you know, you, I don't like that. They did something similar in the in the Power Rangers movie where one of the characters uh, was autistic. And it's like the what? Blue Ranger. Yeah. And it's like I don't like them using that as a it's OK to it's OK to make a movie with with the autistic character because that it's real life you know what i mean but i don't like when they when they were going through this phase of you know what let's try and make it where autism is not it's not that bad and and they're actually like incredible genius level things i think it's a bad plot device personally and i to me i i don't have any in my family you know like autistic or anything but i would be like offended if 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 i did i'd be like this is what is this like this is horrible that's number one number two just what we've everything we've said so far if you didn't get that this plot is nonsense then i don't know what to tell you it's everything's random 
The predator randomly crashes it. He doesn't land, okay? Every other predator landed or took the people there and hunted them. This one, like, accidentally falls out the sky through a weird wormhole, and then he crash lands, and then they capture him randomly. They don't show what happened. All these guys are random, like, these... Everything is random, and I'm, I, do, I hate random movies. I hate when things just conveniently happen. People conveniently meet they just so happened to meet this scientist and this kid and the 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 dad happens to have a kid who can figure out the alien technology. And it's like, oh, my gosh, there's just one after the other. And it's really bad because Shane Black, I think, is a great writer. I think he's a great writer because Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is great. Uh, the Good Guys, I think it's called. The Good Guys is a really great movie. Iron Man 3. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's not bad. And the script is not like horrible. Um, yeah. And then, of course, he wrote Lethal Weapon. Like he's a he's a great writer. I don't know what crack he was smoking when he wrote this movie. Almost nothing works. Almost nothing works. So it's kind of a disaster. And I give it a one. Yeah, look, I, I mean, again, the action is always going to be the highest part. And in, in this for this movie was going to be high. The storyline is a one. I I continuing it with the one. Everything you said was absolutely right. I'm just gonna t- touch on this quick. But when I yeah. saw the minute I saw when we when we were in the theater, me and my wife, and we saw the kid when the alarm went off, and I saw the kid hold his ear, I was yeah. like, please don't add this into the movie because this movie, The Predator, was not a, a movie to add these type of situations. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, this type of flaw in a character. That's what I'm trying to say. It did not work for me because he's not the main character. That's going to fight the Predator. I mean, he became the main character once he figured out how to use it. And the Predator went to his house and now he figured out that this guy is a super genius and they want to take his blood and mix it with the damn Predator when they figured <laughs> out he was this type of genius. So yeah. I was really mad. I, I wanted to leave the theater, but I was just like, let me just finish this movie to see where it goes. And yeah. I was not happy with this. I was not happy with Power Rangers at all when I saw it because I, I felt like you're absolutely, everything you said was absolutely right. Hollywood is, is exploiting the autism knowing, okay, if we put an autism character, whether it's Power Rangers, Power Rangers is a superhero. So kids are going to flock to the theater going, hey, this is the type of guy. And you're absolutely right. There's different types of autism. My yeah. son could put a puzzle together for the first time. He could put a puzzle together in five minutes after looking at a photo. Yeah. That's his, to me, I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Everyone has, he has great memory. But now when it comes to computer and technology, he's not there yet. He's behind the spectrum. Yeah. So it's it's a very different thing. Everyone is different. So the kid in this movie, he's like, he has Asperger's, but then they made him into like, he could just go into technology, alien technology off the whim. Like, first of all, it doesn't work like that. I, I was not happy with it. Yeah. I got even mad when those kids were making fun of him. Like yeah. it was me, my wife, and then there was another couple across the way that was really mad. Like, they were just like, really? Like, they yeah. were going really at the screen. Like, those jokes and I wasn't not, like, if you're going to write that character that way, yeah. you, you can't also have the kids make those kind of jokes. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind it. Like, the kid was trying to pick on them. I didn't mind it. They slapped all the, the chess pieces yeah, on the floor. one thing, yeah. Right. Which I was like, that's okay. But then it was just like, oh, look, we got here. We got an ass. I forgot what he, he called it. And I was just like, uh, it didn't land with me. I was yeah, yeah. I was very shocked that they went down this road. But they did do it. I didn't like it. That was the main focal point in the movie. Did not work for me. Now, the Predators, w- the reason why he was there, he was a freaking alien smuggler bringing <laughs> technology for the humans. And yeah. then they had another Predator hunting them down on Bonnie Hunter. Yeah. I was lost. I was like, wait a minute. So now we have smuggler predators, bounty hunter predators, bringing technology for the humans so they could protect themselves from the bounty hunters coming on Earth to take their their DNA and then mixing it with the humans. I did not like that. I thought that was a very weak, lazy idea just to take just to make money off a property that's famous. And I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say this right now. because This is the last one in terms of us watching the predator. I hope they never make another movie again. I I love the Predator. I think oh, they he's. Did pray. I, they did pray. I I know. I know they did pray, but I but mean pray. Yeah, it's a prequel. But what I mean in like in the futuristic. Yeah, yeah. Like like a modern. I, I mean, movie. I give pray. I give pray. It's props, but honestly, I'm pretty much done with the Predator. Uh, yeah. There's no more you can do. I don't know where you could go after this. I'm honestly, I'm I'm just so burnt out with the Predator. The more we saw the Predator movies, the worse it got. Like I don't understand. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Besides I, well, one, two, and three, I flip flop Predators and Predator yeah. Two. But I get what you're saying. They, they don't get better. They don't like no. keep increasing in quality. 
None of them's even close to the first one. So no, nope. not even in kills action. You Nothing. think the more modern that we get with these, the gadgets will get better? No, Mm-mm. the kills get better. They're all replicating everything from one and two in yeah. every movie. So for me, I just felt like it's just it, they're not doing. They're not may, may being uh, innovative with these storylines. So anyway, with that, I gave it a one. What is your overall in total? So my overall, it's a two. It's a two. And that's because, like I said, I thought the action was a little better than you did. I thought the I gave the villain and lead a two. Yeah, the humor didn't really work. The story's horrible, but I just found myself while watching it, I was like able to get through it decently. I, again, I thought the action was fun, but it's a two. And, you know, two out of five sounds better, but it's like a maybe a three and a half out of 10 for me. But since we don't, I don't, I don't really like to do too much halves or 0.75s. So I'm just going to round to a two. But it's this is the, definitely the worst Predator movie. <laughs> I will even say it's worse than I'm not a fan of Alien vs Predator. I'm not a fan, but this one's worse than Alien vs Predator, and that's PG-13, and that one's better. Now this is probably only better than Requiem because that movie is dark. dark. You can't see anything, and it's horrible. But it's so that one had to be so horrible to be worse than this. This one's definitely the worst of the mainline Predator movies. It's not even, it's, uh, this made me like Predator 2 more. And I didn't even really like Predator 2 that much. So yeah. yeah, if I didn't have this in this box set, I'm glad I sold that steel book. I wouldn't own it. I don't have any purpose to, I'll never watch it again after this. So yeah, it's uh, it's a two for me. Yeah, I never brought the steel book. Like, yeah. honestly, I don't even think I own a Predator steel book. I just have that four pack to be honest I do too now. I used to have, yeah. but not anymore. Yeah, I always <laughs> wanted the Predator with the Arnold and Predator. It was like a colorful one. Like I it was like this one. neon color. Yeah. yeah, I liked that. I also wanted that cover, nice. but it was expensive. I was like, this is way too much. And it was a Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I was like. It's way too much for a Blu-ray. So yeah. I agree with you. This movie is garbage. It is garbage. It is not good. It's not entertaining. It's a waste of film to me. It is. I gave it a one. It is not good. It's it's another one on the on the board. I it hurts me because again, it's one of my favorite characters. Just to give it a one, it's really bad. I agree with you on this though. I enjoy Alien vs. Predator unrated. I think it's a very good storyline. A little poor executed here and there. But the action in it is subpar until they do the universal ride at the end when they're together and they're riding up the damn thing. <laughs> Did not work for me. <laughs> Alien vs. Yeah. Predator. Um uh Requiem. Another movie that had okay storyline, but horrible directing. I mean, the Terrible. darkness is really bad, but I love the scene in the sewer when he, he he attaches all the lasers and then he throws it and you see him all cutting them all up. I was yeah. like, this is, I was like, where is this predator at? Yeah, but one again, good scene. One but that good movie's scene. just so grimy. You're like the yeah. pregnant lady and they're putting the thing in the, I'm like, this is, this felt dirty. I didn't like that movie. Well, I did feel dirty when the, the predator started eating all the kids. And I was like, ooh. Yeah. Uh, that, that did what not work for me. Here? Too much children yeah. murder in that movie for <laughs> <I'll> me. <say. laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, look, all in all, look, I gave it a one. What What is your total points? Uh, 11. It's only an 11 <laughs> out of 25. It's low. I agree with the 67% of people who do not like this movie. Yeah. I'm with them on 11. Well, well you know what's funny? This is not by design. <laughs> when I say my score, it's not by design. I have a 7 11. <laughs> got 7 11 here. Yeah, I'm That's a 7. A I don't think we've ever it had a 7 a and 11. Yeah. We never had a 7 11. Yeah, it's a first. We finally did it. Yeah. <laughs> we did a 7 11. 11. So it's actually pretty funny. I yeah, I scored a seven. It was a one 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 and a three. Um, Yikes! So yeah. This is one of your lowest. This is one of your lowest Very scores low. ever. Yeah, that I can remember. There's a lot of movies. Yeah, a yeah. lot of movies we've seen that was just really. Oh well, maybe Rollerball. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, no. Ro- I think you might have gave Roller. I, we have to go back and listen. We got to go it back to Rollerball. High, but seven <laughs> feels very low. It so. does. It does. I, I'll, I'll check that up. We'll, we'll, we'll hit the archives. Rollerball is very bad. It's that, that, more entertaining than this movie. <laughs> Especially the re, night vision re scene. review of Rollerball. <laughs> it only had a 3% it, on Rotten Tomatoes or isn't something Isn't it coming like out in 4K or is it the original? No, that's the original one. Okay. That one's supposedly good. Say, I don't know. 
I'll tell you this: if that if that rollerball comes out in 4K over like from dusk till dawn, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so mad. But anyway, with that said, Nate, what is coming up next on the podcast? All right, so next episode we're continuing with our horror tinged uh, action movies, and we're gonna be doing a little bit of Dog Soldiers, which me and you actually watched together in person. So we're gonna be doing a together review for a movie we watched in the same room. And then next week we're starting a new franchise, Alex. I, I'm glad that you're tired of Predator. Because we're done with Predator. No Thank more Predator. God. We are oh. moving on to a, a action franchise that I have I have seen zero of the movies. So it will be five first-time watches for me, and it's going to be the Dirty Harry series. Do you feel lucky, punk? Do you? Oh. That's all I know from it. And Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Uh, I don't know nothing else. I know nothing. I've seen, like, no minutes of these movies. I'm actually excited. I bought a Blu-ray four-pack last year when I realized... I was going to be putting this on the schedule. So I'm looking forward to uh, cracking that thing open. And, and uh, the fifth one I'll have to f- watch on HBO or something. But Dirty Harry is the movie we will be reviewing first next week. Nice. I have the DVD. That's what I'm going to be watching oh, it on. Do you oh, feel DVD? <laughs> do you like seven, 240p? <laughs> 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 oh man alright guys there you have it uh, if you want to follow us on our so- oh, social media accounts please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix more reviews anything action movie guys head over to youtube.com slash geeks and flicks for the video version of the podcast and of course we have an official website which will be beginning an upgrade soon you can head over to www.geeksandflicks.com join the Patreon watch the behind the scenes of your favorite episodes being made we have merchandise for Geeks and Flicks and action movies movie guys yeah other than that yeah join the patreon have fun with those perks other than that i'm your host alex figueroa and that is nate from netflix reviews be awesome to each other and geek out (laughs) 